Matt Davio back with Jed Cunahan. Jed, Jed is, uh, we've, we've had you on before. We've talked a little bit about uh, the oil markets. I've been saying lately, Jed, that uh, oil has been my uh, favorite trading vehicle. However, uh, you know, a lot has changed now a lot in the last 10 days, the last couple weeks now that uh, the politicizing of speculators in uh, the free oil markets has specifically come up. So, you know, Jed reached out to me and we planned on talking and it's a relevant subject. So, Jed, thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me, Matt. Uh, and, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, this is this is a frightening issue when you start having politicization of of how an exchange sets margins for any contract in the derivatives world, and they target oil specifically because of what's going on with oil prices and how recently high they've gotten, but. What's really frightening about this, and from our, from my perspective, is that you're going to end up having unintended consequences if they go through with this. Well, they'll raise the margins because the CFTC loves new power. If right. anything, that that's what they're addicted to, and right. they'll raise the margins and force the physical producers who are hedging their risk in the futures market out in the name of combating evil speculators quote-unquote, who have, if anything, provided liquidity to this market. Yeah, you know, again, from a trader's perspective, anytime you, you start uh, getting uh, politicized when it comes to free markets, uh, it's a scary thing. You know, again, I, I've, already, I, I've, already, I've said this repeatedly over the last few years, I think, Jed, that, you know, stock market, when they went to the penny, uh, spreads, uh, w was one way of, uh, kind of, you know, changing the, the margin requirements in, in, in essence. Uh, you're seeing it with the, uh, you know, just the spread of the number of ETFs creates another layer of, you know, margin, if you will, that's added in, you know, so the sellers can, can, can continue to, to sell, uh, retail on a product. You know, futures still are the true trader's vehicle, and and as you said, it gets a little scary when when uh, the administration starts digging into the futures market, wanting to re you know regulate the regulators. I guess you could say. You never would expect that this guy graduated from the University of Chicago, which is basically the home of risk management, if you ever saw it. Right. You know, it, it, that's where that Leo Milani, Milton Friedman. The great, who basically founded the basis for a lot of these contracts that now trade in incredible volumes. Right. And have enabled people to hedge risk all over the world. It's suddenly become politicized. You know what's interesting is it's, and it's interesting where you see this type of issue come up. You see it when stocks are going down. You see it now when oil's going up. So it's when when the masses supposedly don't want to see higher prices in oil or lower prices in equities is when you get this over-involvement and over-regulated situation. Have you ever, you know, that's kind of interesting, you know, versus letting the, no, free, mar that letting, letting the free market go where it will go. And as you said, you know, oil markets are liquid. I mean, there are, there, there are hedgers, speculators, traders, you know, uh, everybody's in this market. It is wide. I mean, it, it's not like it's trading beanie, beanie babies. I mean, it's very liquid. And here's, here's the thing that gets me is that you never hear anybody scream, and you never hear, oh, you haven't heard the administration scream or whine about the Forex markets, which, if anything, have twice as much speculative activity, <laughs> that, not even, more than that, right. exponentially more, if we think about it, than the oil futures market. Absolutely. So what do people do? You know, tell us a little bit about, you know, you know, how your firm, uh, because you're kind of in the middle of this and, 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 you know, it's probably a good thing for you guys, uh, having this, uh, discourse and, and having this, uh, you know, opportunity to tell people about your business a little bit. You know, why don't you tell me how you're looking at this, uh, latest, uh, you know, set of developments that's coming out there. And again, it's just talk right now. It's just conjecture, but, you know, things can change. Yeah. I mean, right, right now, I mean, 
you're looking at several factors. One of it, which is, yes, the speculators do play a role in setting the price of oil, and that's acknowledged. But there's Iran, there's, which is a nice situation. We have a situation where the physical markets don't reflect what's going on in the oil markets because they're not customized to fit the new oil market. And this is with the glut in Cushing, Oklahoma, right. which has to do a lot with transport basis transportation. We previously spoke about this. Right. And it's a situation where there you it's become a tool of an administration to blame speculators for problems that they have if not helped create have completely ignored. And we expect this kind of volatility in prices to continue because this is the real situation. It's right. not a pretty world out there. Yeah, you know, and, and, and really, Jed, you know, really, Jed, what's interesting, and, and it's not so much crude as it is, you know, may, maybe, maybe the Obama administration should be looking at what's going on with natural gas prices. And, and like you said, it's, it's it's almost a hoax. That's you know, don't look at don't look at the problem that's going on with all the you know the excess, as you said, glut and the you know the over you know over capacity we have in natural gas that could be maybe utilized to, to power our cars in the future. Let's not look at how cheap that product is and how we can take advantage of that. Yet let's look at you know Middle Eastern oil and, and the dependence on overseas oil. I mean, it's it's almost it's such a perverse game that's going on right now. You're, exactly. That's is that's the really it's this is the three card monte the three card monte. Yeah. <laughs> With and and oh look here, evil speculators don't look at the fact that we have an tremendous amount of natural resources that we've discovered in the last you know several years. Right. And we're getting oil you know oil production alone in the Bakken Shale. It's coming online, but where is it getting stuck? Cushing, Oklahoma. Right. You know, there's a few refineries over there, but it needs to get down to the Gulf Coast. Right. And then you have Canadian oil. You have the Canadian oil stuck in Canada too. Yeah. So we're back to the we're back to the Keystone issue here. Yeah, the Keystone cops. Oh yeah. Yeah. It really comes down. It really comes down to that. And I cannot find anybody I know in the energy world who was not upset about that decision. Right. It, it, it's just mind-boggling. It, it's, a, it's a pipeline. They're, the safety history of previous pipelines can be shady sometimes, but they're still very, very safe compared to shipping oil through trucks throughout the country. Yeah, you got that right. I mean, I mean, every, every, yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and, you have some spills out there that everybody knows about, but as you said, all you got to do is have a, you know, a... <laughs> There's a multitude of opportunities, you know, with moving, moving, uh, uh, you know, liquid gas all around. So there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and coming to natural gas, we're, we're, are, the, are the evil speculators driving down the price of natural gas, according to this administration? They're not talking about it. They're not talking about it. Yeah, the, 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 I think it was Stephen Short who runs up. Energy News uh, letter who said it best. Natty gas is the dan- is the Rodney danger field of the energy commodities. <laughs> Can't get respect. No respect. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting play. You know, I, I you know ooh, you know I think long term it's probably worth. Uh, you know, at some point, I think somebody's accumulating down here. You know, again, these games are always played for the benefit of the minority, and 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 I think a lot of what's happening is. Um, there's a lot of accumulation going on down here in the sub two dollar level, and who knows if we go to a buck fifty or so on natural gas, you know, they'll, it'll continue to accumulate. But you know, I think a lot of the noise also is is playing up, you know, playing into that accumulation that's going on, and, and, and ultimately, I think I still think oil trades, you know, crude is going to continue to trade lower. I mean, you know, looking at the prices coming in in today, you know, you talk about crude, it really hasn't moved this year. Uh, you know, it's been in a pretty tight 10% range. I mean, Apple, 
you know, moves, uh, you know, 50, 60 percent so far this year. And, and yet we're talking about the speculators and, and, and crew. So go figure. Um, I don't know where it all and, and that you That's what the forward curve is showing us. If you look out, it, it, you have the back months of the forward curve trading lower than the middle of the curve. I know. I know. And, and, and I think what, I think what you'll see my opinion is, you know, we're kind of we're kind of hanging around here. This let's call it uh, ninety-eight dollars a barrel to one hundred and ten. We've been hanging around here for the twenty twelve campaign. Um, I think once we break that ninety-eight level on crude, it's going to be back, you know, back down into that forty to seventy dollar range again in crude. And 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 I I, I just I, I can't see it hanging up here right now without again outside. Uh, wars and those types of things coming in. It looks a little broken to me. It looks a little stretched after running from that 75 up to one, you know, 110. Uh, and and I, I think you're right. I think we'll, the two factors that will get us there are when we have connections on the pipelines here so we can get the crew to where it's desired. Right. And from the Bakken Shale to Oklahoma. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's part of the, again, maybe that's part of the, you know, the, those that are in control. Maybe that's what they're trying to do is get natural gas so, you know, attractively low in price that they're going to have to jam this, uh, you know, next try through on the pipeline. It, it, at some, I mean, at some point, you have to sit there and look at it and go, why the hell not? Yeah. And some of the initial research we've done on converting truck fleets to natural gas makes absolute sense when you look at the price of ultra low sulfur diesel going out. Well, you, and the many, lack of you, refining these ghosts. Jed, do you have any idea how many um, cars are, are you know converted to natural gas in the, in the U.S. today? I know I was reading an article. I think it was in Forbes or Fortune talking about um, China. Is now got about a billion or a billion, one million, one million cars, and most of its taxi fleets. They said that have converted and, and are being forced to convert convert over to natural gas consumption. I, I don't know the number off the top of my head. It's mostly local, uh, bus, you know, municipal bus fleets and some, you know, school bus fleets as well as taxis. Okay. Also and. Municipalities have been adopting it somewhat, not as not as much as I've seen the, the biofuels, mm-hmm. but it, it, it's getting there where the the it's really not, I mean, way makes sense. My understanding, and it's pretty rude, you know, it's pretty pretty simple. But my understanding is it's pretty uh, it's not that difficult to do, and it's not that costly. You know, filling stations no, and is still, you, still the issue. And if you can do, if you can do it yourself and have a connection to natural gas in your home and don't travel that much and in terms of distance away where you would not be able to fill up your tank, you should do it. And you have absolutely on a, on a per million BTU basis it makes sense. I mean how does it convert? Give me you know give me an idea if I had a you know I had a I had a suburban thirty eight you know gallon gasoline tank you know, what would it look like for me to run, you know, run my suburban, you know, with natural gas? Two dollars and change. Right. So, but, but I get the same type of fuel. It doesn't matter whether it's nat gas or, or, or um, you know, gasoline. Yeah, I mean, once the conversion's done, it, it, you get the measure on energy content basis, which is per million BTU. Okay. But it, the per gallon equivalent would be. I two dollars. Okay. Maybe a little bit higher. Maybe maybe two thirty at most. Right. So I'm cutting. So basically, I'm cutting my cost in half to operate. Uh, you know, with nat gas for that five or six hundred bucks. If I'm able to. Absolutely, do that. and and you avoid the taxes. That's <laughs> one of the key things. Is that when you pay the price of gasoline, you're not you're you're cutting in your state and local government and the feds for every gallon you buy. Right. And that again, can represent fifteen percent of the price. Again, the great hoax. The great hoax. Yeah. Yeah. The great okay. hoax, exactly. Okay. All right, Jed. Well, thanks for coming on. We're going to have to keep up with this subject because, uh, again, it's uh, it's going to be a fascinating one, and um, we'll see what happens. You know, it's. Uh, Thank you for having me, Matt. I appreciate it.
Appreciate it.